No, because there are colors that we haven't bought more than one bag of. Ta-da! We're going to start. I'm going to look at the one in my um, my bag. Ta-da! Ta-da! Good morning. I could also be my migraine, but I swear. Could be. The ones I've been knitting with, the first batch we got, don't have that. But that's lovely. They say muslin free. Hi! Good morning. Welcome to the Sun Dragon Sideshow. The Dear Becky and Lizzie edition. <laughs> um, I'm going to look in there in one second. We're having a, a, a lively debate as it starts. Look! Look! I bound off my sleeves. They might be a little short, but I've decided, well, I do care, but I'm going to just keep going with life. So it's like the right. So this is the yarn of the week. If you were watching yesterday, this is Juniper Moon Farm Mallow. Before I even do my introductions, um, because I want to sit down for that. Um, And the sleeves come right to my wrists, but maybe that's a little short. I'll, I'll, ta-da. So another one for Frog It or Finish, Finish It or Frog It February. <sighs> My head is a little off today. Just a heads up. Um, which is why I haven't introduced myself yet. <laughs> um, so this is a finish. Yay! I like to show you all before and after blocking. So this is my before. And maybe I'll do this. So you all can kind of see it right here. And then I'll put those back because they're cute. Um, but <laughs> this is my before blocking. I feel like it. I should have made maybe the sleeves a little longer, but I was so ready to be done. I'm done. I'm not going back. I'm only going forward. So um, if it really bugs me later, I will take some of my leftovers because I do have a bunch of leftovers. And I can always pick up and add to the, the cuffs. So, Hi. I'm Rebecca. <laughs> I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in gloomy and rainy, and I don't even know how cold it's going to be Brevard, North Carolina. I'm Liz. I'm the minion there. Uh-huh. So I haven't woven any ends in yet. <laughs> this is starting to feel short again. I, I tried this on last night before the cuffs, and I'm like, it's going to add an inch. I think I'll be fine. Maybe I wasn't. Okay. Um, I gotta check one thing. One thing. I have my sixth ball. I'm pretty sure. Like, I didn't just get all my... Oh, it does have it. Mm -hmm. Huh. I totally missed. This is what migraines do, I guess, or something. I totally missed that there's a little muesling-free little little, uh, symbol in the corner of these mallow. Like, I... My memory of these doesn't have that on it. I guess my migraine is re- retroactively affecting how I remember these ball bands. I don't even know. But um, muesling for people, when it says muesling free, uh, for people who are like, what the heck is that? It's it's a way of shearing the sheep, right? Like the muesling is a, an effect on the sheep that, that might yeah. hurt them. Do so you know? merino <laughs> wool, like when they were breeding them, they... Like, did extra folds in the back of their neck. Okay. And mule sling is where they cut those off. Like, while, when, they're, mm-hmm. when they're grooming them? they it, Yeah. Yeah. So, that's why you will see mule sling free Because wool, that's because, considered, like, yeah, cruelty, cruel. yeah. whatever. Yeah. Not whatever. I don't mean whatever. But that's a filler word that has a triviality to it that is not intended to be applied to the situation. <laughs> so. It's still better than that's hilarious. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I woke up with a migraine and I've taken medicine, but if I'm ever losing my train of thought or being a little spacey, exhibit A, that's why. Um, did we already say this is the Dear Becky and Lizzie Thursday edition? I yeah. might have. Okay, good. Because... And, and thank you, yesterday, someone told us yesterday that, yes, Liz did get to introduce herself twice. Or was it Tuesday? I don't know. See? Can't, can't keep track. Sometime this week. Sometime this week. Um, but I, I think with this sweater, we're about to get to our question for the day. I think with this sweater, um, my size was supposed to take six, and I'm, I'm pretty sure it only took five. They said we can weigh this and find out. Not, on, not necessarily on camera today. Unless we, like, have tons of time. I don't want to waste time with that. Um, but I still have this much left from my, the, the two I started for my sleeves. 
So even if I did, it did take the six. It didn't really take the six. I could have been more judicious with breaking up my yarn and um, only have needed five. My gauge was a little smaller than the pattern called for. So the whole sweater came out a little smaller. So used less yarn and I made my sleeve shorter, but I still think my sleeves wouldn't have gone beyond the balls I just showed you if I'd made them the pattern's correct length. So. And it like <coughs> doing two at a time sleeves like mm -hmm. you were doing and I've done and you know, lots of people do. Sometimes it is just easier to have that extra bowl whether you have a whole ball left over at the end or not, because mm -hmm. sometimes dividing your ball in half, you may or may not run out bef like at the bottom. So sometimes it's just easier. Yeah. You know. At the bare minimum, what I could have done, I had like a little bit of one ball left and I cracked into a new ball when I started my sleeves. At the bare minimum, what you can do is take what you have left, if say you only have one ball and split it in two. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, when you run out, you maybe you have three quarter length sleeves because you run out of yarn yeah. and, you know, but yeah, I have two balls helps. I, I've divided balls in half and sometimes I win and sometimes I have to open that next ball just to finish mm -hmm. the cuffs or whatever. So, um, it's more of a convenience thing sometimes, but you know, I think I'm going to embrace this as a, as a just shy of full length sleeves. But I think the other reason it's, I think if um, the, the sleeves on this pattern didn't have any decreases, it was just go, like tapered sleeves, which is a traditional sleeve mm -hmm. for a sweater, then the down here doesn't feel as open. It feels a little more um, close around your cuff. And I just, I feel the breeze right now from these. Um, and I think it's because it's not tapered. So even when I push them up, they're not going to stay up. They're going to fall down. But... I still love this sweater and I don't know if you can see the lace work cause it's so dark, but I am going to, I will block it this weekend and sew in my ends and then y'all will see on Tuesday, um, what it looks like blocked. So there you go. And on Tuesday, if you're only a Tuesday watcher, cause we have our different episodes on different days. If you're only a Tuesday watcher and you say, Oh, but what did that look like before you blocked it? I'll say go back and watch Thursday's, last Thursday's episode. So, um, I forgot to discuss something for, with you before we got on camera, so we just won't talk about it on the show today. Okay. Anyway, let's see what questions we have. We just have the one. Okay. Dear b &L, what a shock. I'm not sending this Wednesday night. This was from last week, so, you know. Um, it wasn't last minute. Yeah. Another sock conundrum. Last year, prior to the, to the Winter Olympics, I cast on multiple pairs of socks, thinking this would be the perfect mindless knitting when then I discovered one cannot knit during ice dancing. Fast forward several months and I pulled my wad o socks out into daylight. I have meticulous notes on number of stitches, measurements for the various sections of socks for a variety of loved ones. Alas, over the course of the aforementioned several months, my gauge has changed. My first question is this, is it better to change needle sizes or employ sweater math and add stitches using my current needle size? Is one solution preferable or is it a matter of look at, of the look of the resulting fabric? Question two, this sock extravaganza seemed like the perfect time to jump into afterthought heels, but with the gauge change, they had issues. Do you all have any suggestions for modifying afterthought heels to create more room? Okay. Question. Let's go backwards. Question two, the afterthought heels. Honestly, I haven't played around with afterthought heels too much. I have my first pair of afterthought heels on needles right now. First pair of socks, and it's a single sock, with the afterthought heel on my needles right now. And I have stalled out on it. I'm hoping that Finish It or Frog It February will inspire me to have more time for it and energy for it. So um, I don't have advice on afterthought heels and making more room for them. But my the, the afterthought heel that is in the Ready Set Sock book has equally distributed decreases that kind of spiral in like the top of a hat. So 
it's going to have a different shape than um, like the one I'm exper- I'm about to experience. It's going to have a different shape than when you just have the decreases at the sides. Like it, it does this type of a thing with the decreases rather than it's decreasing all over. And I'm not sure how to modify that. It, that that's going to take some trial and error on your part. And this is why so many, I think, so many people are really particular to the type of sock they like to make because the heels fit differently or the toes fit differently. Like shout out to Amy D. She does Hermione's everyday sock almost every single time because I, I think it's how the heels, or just mm-hmm. the toes, it's the heel, how mm-hmm. the heel fits. Like it's a classic heel flap. It's well, it's a modified heel flap, but it's the, it's the classic flap heel turn and then gusset. But the heel, the heel turn or the, the way the flap is constructed, like you'll find by doing different things. I've seen different heel turns on a classic sock that either turn the, what I feel like with the Hermione's everyday mm-hmm. sock is it's a little pointier in my experience than some other heel turns, which means you're starting the turn closer to the center instead of giving you a wider heel base. Um, and it's hard to describe that right now without pictures. And that's what I do in my tips and tricks videos. But it could be that the afterthought heel is not the best heel to use. And if once you become more familiar with, with socks, and, and this person may be very familiar with socks, we don't know, but as one knits more socks, you might have the ability to start to like substitute heels, potentially, or just use the pattern that you like the heel on the best. I, in my grand experience of socks, which is what, a pair and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked her heel that I did, but I'm like, Whose heel? it's the Flegel heel, or because uh, when you say her heel, there's so it, many hers. Yeah, the the pattern writers. Okay, so, sorry, I interrupted the F- Flegel heel. Go yeah, ahead. it was a Flegel heel. I liked it, and but my brain can't wrap around how to modify anything. So like, my modifications are bigger needles bigger yarn oh look i have a swan show like that's my thing that doesn't work for socks but it doesn't work for socks <laughs> so if the numbers don't play out i'm like uh, okay this doesn't work and it will either sit unfinished forever or i'll you know start it on a different pair of needles or mm-hmm. you know i because my brain just it doesn't instinctively do math for me. Well, and it's really fascinating. I find people who are like, well, you run a yarn shop, so you must be able to modify things. Not necessarily. I'm really good at following the pattern because that's what I need to tell my knitters to do. But then I have knitters who come in and say, but you can tell me how to fix this or change this or put a different collar in this, right? And it's like, no. There, there are people out there that yeah. just instinctively know how to do that. And there or, are people or who they don't. They have the bravery to do yes. that. And that's cool. And the bravery to do that and mess up on that until they get it right. Um, but it's not a given that everyone who runs a yarn shop or works in a yarn shop can do those things. And there's things I'm really good at. And, and there's things that people come to me for, but to be a jack of all trades with everything, like not every yarn shop owner is a master knitter or is someone who can modify or can make up patterns or who designs pat Like that's like, that's a unicorn person, I think, that does all of that and runs a yarn shop. There's someone who might be able to do all of that who doesn't run a yarn shop. But um it's like building building me up to mythical status, which is not, and that's not what this 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 question writer is doing. Um, I I would say that when I finally get around to my afterthought heel, I I can have some more advice on this. Um, my my only off the cuff, like it's, it's like theoretical physics or something. Mm-hmm. It's like not from experience, but extrapolating. If the afterthought heel is evenly distributed decreases. It could be um, doing fewer or more of them. So if it was like, say, divided into into four decreases, if you wanted to try three instead, or if you wanted to try five, that might change the shape of the heel and that might make it fit better. That's a huge might. And 
that doesn't take into account the first part of the question, which is, I started these well, socks and my gauge that's changed. What we're, that's what we're yes. moving towards. Yes. Like we were going backwards. Yeah. So, yeah. like, that then becomes... Mm-hmm. You could go up needle sizes. You, you know, it's going to change different fabrics. Mm-hmm. My my thought on tackling that question is so the person who's writing said, I started socks and I put them away and then I pulled them back out again. And all these notes didn't necessarily work. I think the answer, the possible answer to this question depends on um, factors like, did you have them on needles? And when you pulled them back out, the gauge didn't match. Like, if you have already knit part of the sock, I wouldn't do math about... I, I would change the needle. I wouldn't I wouldn't try to add or subtract stitches from what you already have on, on needles. I would find out what needle gives you the right... the gauge that matches what you already did and start working on those needles. So it they look like consistent socks rather than, like... Half a sock is, is, half a foot is knit, and then all of a sudden you added in stitches all over to make it work. Because the feel of, say, the toes, the, the toe half versus the back half, you might be able to magic math out how to have the same circumference so it didn't go from toes to, like, suddenly, ah, at the heel. Um, but they'll feel different. The gauge, like, I can tell in my, in my, on my feet different gauges of socks like the first pair i made had the right gauge but the the weave felt for lack of a better word felt weird on my feet like i wanted something tighter so then i i switched to smaller needles and and i've learned like different needles that you think when needles are that small it won't change your gauge much to change needle sizes but you'd be surprised because i i did a um toe up sock on a one and a half needle and then I, I'm like I want to make them on zeros I want to make all my socks on zeros now and I following the same instructions I had to go up a size in the instructions to have them fit my feet right and so. that it's it's just like with sweaters or anything else that we've talked about mm-hmm. with gauge being that even though it's like less than half of a knit stitch for you know four inches or whatever you start adding that up and Mm -hmm. your sock is smaller than your torso so like it's going to change more than you think it will it it all depends like usually when you're that small it's more than half a stitch but and or you'll think it won't change that much and you'll suddenly have like an extra stitch or two and not realize it but um i would say if it's the difference between one sock being finished and the next sock and you and you don't want to change the needle because that's all you have available then it's magic math and it's it's figuring out um i always go by the the where you're going to be um knitting in a circle no increases no decreases is that going to fit around your foot and with socks conventional wisdom is you want a little bit of what we call negative ease where you don't want to say, well, my my foot is eight inches around, so my sock needs to be eight inches around. You want your sock to come out a little bit. Sometimes it's even half an inch, but mm-hmm. at least a little bit um, gauge-wise, smaller circumference so that it stays on your foot without cutting off your circulation, but it stays on your foot because if you make it the same size, there's always a little stretch in the right material for socks, which is usually like a superwash wool or merino which is a kind of wool, and nylon, um, there's going to be a little give to it. So when you put it on your your feet, if you don't want them to be like, <sighs> when the day is done or even when the day starts, they need to be a little smaller than your foot. Um, so it, it really depends. But even if, like, I'm approaching this question from um, being halfway done, and if that mm-hmm. means halfway done with a sock or only having one sock done, I'd like the socks to feel the same on both of my feet. So I would err more towards the side of finding needles that match the gauge you had before. And if that means you're a tighter knitter now, go up a size. And if that means you're a looser knitter now, if you can, go down. If you were doing zeros to begin with, there are smaller needles than zeros, but we don't carry them. <laughs> we would have to special order them. There's zeros and then double zeros and then triple zeros. Um, go down if you can. 
Um, and, and if all else fails, you may just want to start those suckers all over again. That's my best guess on that. Um, for adapting, I, here's where, where I'll say some magic math could be involved either way. Not either way, but your gauge has changed. The sock pattern is only written for one size sock, but you like the gauge you have now. You might have to do some magic math to figure out how to make socks that will fit your feet. If following the pattern means they will not come out the right size. That's where some magic math would be involved. But um, I, I go back to, I would try to find, I, I'm, I'm a really big fan of don't change how you knit, change the size of your tool to make things work. Because trying to change how you knit um, or crochet really involves a whole lot of practice and time. And if you just want to dive in and make sure it comes out okay, change your tools. The tools are the, are the reliable thing you have control over. As this person is writing, mm -hmm. gauge is something you may not have as much control over because this person had a different gauge from, you know, six months, a year, four years ago than they do now. And we have people come in the shop all the time and say, I'm an on-gauge knitter. And I'm thinking, your gauge has never changed your entire life. That's interesting. I mean, I don't say that out loud because it's considered rude. But <laughs> but most of us, I mean... Well, and, and the definition of on-gauge knitter has changed because... There used to be a time when books were written that if you use this yarn and this needles or hook, you could achieve the sta a standard gauge. And because yarns have changed, nobody's really an on-gauge knitter. Yarns have changed. You don't only have, <coughs> uh, have patterns produced by big, huge companies mm -hmm. that have an idea of what gauge is. Um, it, so, yeah, the way yarns are constructed has changed. So, like, a, a medium worsted weight yarn with a size 8 needle, like, getting 20 stitches per inch, that doesn't happen with every yarn now. And not every yarn is going to have its worsted weight, so use US 8 needles and get this gauge on it. There, it'll be well, worsted weight, but we want you to yeah. use this bigger needle, or we want to, you know. And, and a lot of pattern writers are like, I like my gauge. Mm -hmm. My gauge is tight, or my gauge is loose, but I like my gauge. I like how it came out. So this is my gauge that I'm giving you in the pattern. Mm -hmm. And... I, I think the correct thought now is even tension. Like, is your tension consistent more than is your gauge on gauge? Uh, and yeah, because the very notion of on gauge yeah. is, is a weird thing now. But um, and, and those pattern writers, I, f I feel like the other way I tackle it is not so much. I like my gauge. It's, it's not even a question if they like or don't like it. It's a this is what these are the needles I used and this is how it came out. And this was my gauge. And, and yeah, they're not trying to hit a company. They're not even aware there used to be a company set standard or that a, a yarn ball says this, so I must blah, blah, blah. We have, we have knitters who come into the shop and crocheters who are just like, I need a, a yarn that says this on it or else it won't work for my pattern. And it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a lot of ifs and buts and maybes in that so um like even this yarn for example so the more i'm wearing this the more i'm like i either have to accept these are now becoming three-quarter length sleeves or i have to i have to pull this out and change it i wasn't going to i really wasn't going to but i'm like hey i'm feeling it now if you frog out the 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 cuffs mm -hmm. and then finish it it will count as a finish a frog and a finish all in one sweater Sure. <laughs> It'll count as a fix. <laughs> Frog it, fix it, finish it. All the Fs. All, all the Fs. All month long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But this, this is also inspiring me to want to get back to... Um, all the socks I have on needles. That's something I haven't, I haven't gone back to. I'm both trying to do some monogamous knitting this month to finish things. And I'm thinking about all the stuff I want to add a little bit of progress to, you know, I have, but I have downloaded two or three sweater patterns <laughs> and bought yarn for at least one of them. And I'm like, I new sweater. Oh wait, new hair. Oh wait, new sweater. 
And I'm hoping some of my frogs and finish are inspiring people to start projects eventually, because we do still need to sell yarn. So <laughs> <laughs> I think I've joked about that before, but it's so true. February is a, a slow month. So um, I wanted to, we're about to sign off. There's a couple things. Um, the thing I didn't discuss with Liz, so we can't like formally announce a code or anything, but we will be having our version of a Valentine's sale next week. Um, and it may be only on Valentine's Day. It may be the day before and maybe to the day after, but I can't guarantee that. So this is so not... So pay attention I to social media. Sorry. Both wanted to finish my sentence and also let her talk a little. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, pay attention to social media. Uh, we like to call it a treat yourself rather than Valentine's Day because, you know, I got some residuals on that. Um, but uh, treat yourself. Is what it's we like to do. It's just easier. It's just, it's just, it's more, well, it's also about, um, it's all about self-love for Valentine's Day. Um, and it's at least going to be on Tuesday. So we will talk about it on Tuesday's show. But Tuesday's show is going to come out midday at best Tuesday, right? So pay attention to social media if you want to hop on it early. I'm not sure what the percentage or the code name will be, but it'll be something decent, you know. Um, chunk wise, you know, also we won't put bad words in the title, but that's okay. Um, it actually transitions me a little to, um, uh, addressing some questions from Tuesday's episode where we were, I was frogging on camera and we were talking about some things and some newer visitors to the channel weren't aware of some of the stuff that <laughs> went into why I was frogging what I was frogging. And I don't like to totally burden you all with my drama and trauma, but um, but the piano scarf, which was absolutely lovely. After the couple things, after we got off, um, I looked up the pattern. The pattern is no longer available. As, so people who were like, I want to make it. It's Michael's piano scarf, M-I-K-K-E-L. And you can find the header for it on Ravelry as a listing, but it's no longer available. And it was kind of super complicated to make. So that when you put in piano scarf, you can find other things, which is really cool. But um, that specific one, and we had other people who were like, I want to finish it. Let me finish it for you. And other people who, again, since they were questions, I feel I can kind of address them here, um, who were kind of flabbergasted that I wouldn't donate all that hard work somewhere and that that was the good option for what I should do with that. Um, so to address it all in a nutshell. It, one of the things about, like, the whether it's flabbergasted, outraged, I'm not sure what, but that I wouldn't, that I was actually going to rip all that out. My take on that is, I mean, that was good therapy for me. And, and my take on that and that person's question is we all have a story. We all, we all have things going on for us. And for this person, I don't know what was going on for them that they were just like, oh my gosh you should be doing this or why didn't you do this and and something is going on for them that that is the logical choice with what they would have done um for for me and my trauma and where i'm at that was the only healthy thing honestly for me to have done to we it, were gonna burn it like six months ago <laughs> and we, we didn't we, happen but. let me tell you that i'll tell you the end of what's happening to it but um it wasn't long enough to be something functional yet. It could have been a lovely little sample in the shop. To finish it would have kept my trauma going because that was something I was making for my ex who um, I was in a long relationship with and trying to do something very loving for that person. And when people are like, what's the Brian incident? Um, I've gone through enough therapy. I'm not going to dump all of it on here. But... It was my long-term relationship with the person I moved here to open the shop with. Um, he left me almost two years ago now. And from my point of view, it was at, without warning. Because up till the day he said, it's over, he told me everything was fine. And so that has its own issues for me. So that's one of the reasons why that was very therapeutic for me to, to undo and release and let go of that project. Now, here's, here's the other thing that happened that what we already kind of had plans for is 
I didn't want to reclaim that yarn and make it into anything else. Because again, for me, bad juju in all of that. But it was very nice yarn. And so we were, early therapy for me was going to be to burn it, right? And instead, here's almost the compromise. Not because of that question. It was already in place. Is, shout out to Carol. She took home the glob of what was very therapeutic for me to release and not keep near me. Um, and most of my friends who were like, this is really nice yarn. What would I use this for? They also were struggling with, for us, it's got bad juju in it. Um, so Carol has untangled the mess and wound it all up and made it look decently pretty again. And because it's still really good usable yarn, it was Lorna's laces. And she is taking it to a local thrift store that benefits a very good cause with a cultivated craft section. So someone else is going to get some awesome yarn at and a not super have to deal cheap with price the of it. and not have any bad juju attached to it. So that is what works for me. And what worked for someone else might be to keep it intact and donate it. And that's all good. We all have different ways of dealing with what's going on in our lives and working through what's going on in our lives. So that's all the, the gossip about my life you get from me today. <laughs> and, well, and, and realistically, we couldn't make another sample out of it for the shop or whatever because we don't have those colors and Lorna's laces is discontinued. There's so many reasons that so, we weren't going to keep yeah. it in the shop. Um, and, and on top of that, donating the finished piece it wasn't a finished piece yet and there was no way yep. i was going to finish it i know there are people volunteering to finish it i don't even know if i had enough yarn to finish it at that point yeah so um because lorna's lace is out of business um so someone at the thrift store is going to get a lovely gift and that is no longer in my life and i don't know if it was that yesterday or um because i finished frogging it yesterday morning or i did too much last night or you know, residual whatever I got the migraine going on today, so, um, but I hope, that, I think finish it or frog it February is another way to find peace with things, to let go of things, and yeah, not every, like, I, um, I'm gonna probably bring this up on Tuesday again, because I'll do a litany of what I've gone through and done and ev everything. This was a piece I was going to, this is the Euclid shawl, but this was a piece I was going to frog, and then I said, no, it can still, I'll, We'll leave this, excuse me, we'll leave this little piece in the shop. Why not? So the, uh, the option of binding off where you're at is perhaps a more peaceful option for some people rather than frogging it. But sometimes frogging it's really therapeutic. I, I, I call the starts of asymmetrical shawls pizza slices. So, you know. That's what this is. Yeah. It looks like a pizza slice. Um, it's a giant pizza slice. But um, I will frog stuff, especially when I want to reclaim the yarn and make something new out of it. And that's some of what I've done here, too. Anyway, we need to go. Uh, last heads up that our monthly dual platform virtual sit and stitch is this Sunday. So the February hangout with us on a Sunday afternoon is 1 to 5 p.m. on February 12th. You can uh, go to our Facebook page and check out me and hear what's going on on Zoom. Or you can join us on Zoom. You get in with the shop phone number. 828-877-3550. And that's also tomorrow night, Friday, from 7 to 9 p.m. I've, I've been thinking all morning that that's tonight because I, my migraine. My, my brain just went, oh, crap. It's knit night tonight nope, and Sunday. Tomorrow and night. then I went, oh, yeah. There's still two knit nights. And that's both both a blessing to hang out with people and a drain on personal reserves. But I'm happy to do it because I like hanging out with people. Um, but yeah, we'll have it on Friday and Sunday. And hopefully I can kick this migraine by then. That would be lovely. But it's also hormonal, so I might not be able to. So anyway, enough about my head. Ugh. Have a good weekend. Join us on one of our Zooms if you'd like to. Come by the shop if you want to. Uh, the shop, it's Tuesday through Saturday, 10 to 5. We're still asking people to wear masks to come in. Did I say Tuesday through Saturday? I think so. Okay. If I said Friday, I if meant If you Saturday. said Friday, my brain just rolled with it. Like Right. Tuesday through Saturday, 10 to 5. I think that's a sign that we should go open up the shop. All right. We love you all. Bye. Like, subscribe, ring the bell. All the fun stuff. Yay. Yay. <laughs>